not Todd Fox. Uh, this is Fernando Mendez, obviously part of the Halos of the Infield team, coming on here to A, distract ourselves a little bit from what the hell is going on in the field because I can't take that shit, nor can you. It is completely unacceptable. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to take a page at a Grill Master's book. It is time to DFA everybody from the top down, right? God. Damn it. it just, there's just a couple of games where, uh, you know, it just, nothing's going well. All right. Uh, give me a second here. Just trying to send a couple texts here. So once again, Ty Buttery is about to come on right now. We are just trying to, uh, you know, figure out uh, when he's on. Oh, there we go. All right. Now we just got to wait for ye old internet. And when that decides to work, we shall be good. All right. What up, man? What is up, Ty? How's it going? First of all, thank you. I it's Today's been a crazy day. Bro, don't even worry about it, man. Uh, Sam, keep, hold on. <laughs> Sam, can you turn that light on? Sorry, I guess I needed some light. Sam asked me if I needed light. I'm like, no, nah, I think we're good. Uh, can you guys see? <laughs> or what the heck is going on? Um, I can see your forehead. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Um, no, man, it's been it's been good. I uh, Sam and I have been going all day, so I know you've been going all day too, Fernando, and you know, I'm glad we could link up here at the last little bit of the time on the East Coast for me, but it's just getting kicked off on the West Coast for you guys. Are you in the West Coast right now? No, I'm in New Jersey. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah no, this, this traveling is, is catching up with me. What? I was in Chicago last week, and now I'm in New Jersey. So it's a good times. Dude, I literally remember you sending me that text, and I've been going through my DMs left and right. I've been. My brain is literally fried right now, so I'm sorry if I kind of spacey. Like, I was just – you should see – look at this laundry that I just did. I did all that laundry. <laughs> I did – got my DMV license plate so we don't have an unregistered tag anymore. Uh, vacuumed. Did some content. Cryptocurrency. Did my routine. So, it's late for me, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm happy to get on here. Yeah, you reminded me real quick. I should check how my uh, how my Dogecoin investment's going. Hey, we're going up. We're going we up. We are going up. Yeah, we are. Because uh, I mean, I, I I bought in heavy, and I was like, oh man, this is not going to be good. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> but you know, you and I had agreed we're we're ride or die this time. Oh, uh, it's you have to be ride or die, man. I bought in early at like three cents. I sold off a little bit, um, bought back in, but I mean, I don't even I don't even know what's going on with the crypto space right now. I I stopped tweeting about it or posting about it because i'm like i don't want to be telling people to go buy this shit like excuse my language like it's all over the no, place no, so. you're good dude we're not a piece i'm just kind of chilling <laughs> okay yeah that's probably the best thing to do um so we brought on ty uh for basically the same reason we asked him to come on the first time to kind of talk about life in the minor leagues but uh you know what we did that about a month and then some change ago but when yeah. we did that we were in a situation where it was basically just us talking, and but now it's something that's now been brought up, you know, for some national uh, attention. Yeah. ESPN brought it up. Uh, you know, it was on the, some major news outlets covered it. Uh, Jeff Fletcher of the OC Register locally covered it. So uh, now I just wanted to bring on Ty just to kind of tell us about what's going on in his opinion and, you know, explain to people that this is an MLB issue and an, a minor league baseball issue. It's not necessarily an Angels issue. Uh, so yeah. let's kind of start off with uh, just the basics. Uh, what's your perception on what was reported? I know you, you, what. you read the article. Yeah, so I read the article, and unfortunately, the Angels were kind of the scapegoat, in my opinion, in that article. Um, you know, everyone has their own opinions on what team's doing what, but I can tell you from what was reported, that wasn't that. That's not a singular team issue. That's not the Angels. Man, that's how it's been going on for years. That's what's been accepted. That's what's been almost tolerated to a degree. And so, you know, it's 2021. Everyone has social media at the, you know, everyone has a platform. Everybody has a voice to some degree. And somebody spoke up and was like, hey, this is kind of horseshit. What's going on? And 
you know, I, I think the younger generation of kids that are coming into this new, you know, this professional world, you know, you're starting to see these old veteran, old school guys kind of cycle out of the game. And you're starting to see a new branch of players come through. And I think when those new players come through, I think they have their own, um, like, expectation of what professional baseball would be. You guys have seen me talking about the $12,000 salary, which is a joke. Um, you know, in that article, that Google or that ESPN article, mainstream kind of starting to talk about it a little bit. I think people are starting to realize that, like, yes, the MLB is this amazing, amazing thing. It's this awesome opportunity. You work your life, you know, your whole life. You sacrifice. You get there. You're a superstar. But there's this process in order to get to there that's, like, so not talked about. And I think we're starting to see the beginning of that unravel. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it always starts with a uncomfortable conversation. You know what I mean? It's there, There's a starting point. And I think the good news is that now that barrier has been officially crossed. You know, it's one thing for you yeah. and I to talk about it or, you know, some other podcast. But it's another thing when a, somebody like ESPN, who's obviously a heavy hitter in the sports world, talks about it. So yeah. hopefully that does start the conversation for people. But what happens is, you know, people jump on things while it's sexy. You know, like, oh, right now it's cool to think that minor league baseball isn't fair. But what's going to happen in two months when people stop caring? You know, it's that's when – the work officially starts. So, yeah. you know, as fans, the best thing, you know, the fans can do is just talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. And hopefully these major league owners will start to realize, you know, this is pretty effed up, man. Like, I don't, you know, if you read the article, uh, you know, and that's just to the listeners, you can see that it said that there's six men living in a three bedroom apartment. Like one of them's living in the kitchen. One of them's living in the living room. It's like, that's oh, not yeah. a way to live. No. It's not a way to live, and it's, it's not a way to treat your team. It's not a way to treat the prospects. In my opinion, everybody's a prospect. If you get drafted by a major league team, if you're on some type of roster, if you're trying to strive to get to the MLB, you're a prospect. doesn't matter if you have $10 million, doesn't matter if you have 1000 bucks. But here's the thing, man. We talk about competing on an equal playing field. You know, I, I've talked about this many times on my platform, how I had a nice signing bonus. You know, I was drafted out of high school. I didn't have some of these issues that other guys are going through right now. And I'm not saying I regret that. It's, it was my personal experience. It was what it was. But I was mad at myself for when I got to the MLB and I didn't shed more light on the situation. Because, dude, like, I spent those times going through the minor league levels. Like, I saw my teammates, you know, five, six deep in a hotel room, a one-two bedroom. Like, I saw guys cooking out of, um, you know, crock pots to save five bucks a meal. Like, like, I saw there's so many things that have been going on that it's like, at what point do you sit there and, like, start questioning, like, what's – why is this happening? Why has this not been, like, addressed more? And, like, the only thing I can think about is kind of what you were saying, Fernando, is, like, you know, this is cool for, like, a month or two. Um, and I've seen this pattern for probably the last two to three years where people, they talk about the minor league pay. It sucks. They have a little court agreement. It gets shot down or gets brought up, and then that's it. It's dead. And it's like I think the issue is the lack of awareness from the fans. You know, I'm talking about $12,000, man. Like, you ask, yeah. a, you ask a normal person in the street, hey, how much do you think a minor league baseball player makes? They'll probably say $100,000, or, or they'll yeah. say, oh, they're rich. No, man, like these guys for eight months out of the year, including spring training, are getting paid twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars. Most of the time, they're not even getting paid for extended spring training. That's something people don't even oh, realize. Hell no, hell no, they're not getting paid for extended spring training. It, dude, it's like, like I said, like I had my nice signing bonus. I was a young kid. I was going through the process like everyone else was, but I'm sitting there reflecting post MLB career and being like, holy shit, man, how is this not like? Why is this not changed, man? Like, yep. if we're trying to compete, if we're trying to win this World Series. Like, that's the goal. You get drafted yeah. to win the World Series. That's the goal of baseball. Final, like, it's not about getting a long-term contract. It's about winning the World Series. My goals were a little bit different. Obviously, I was working to help my team win the World Series, but it's like, why not take care of that prospect? Why not give a little bit of extra percentage off that top dollar amount and bit, and throw it back into the these guys that who knows if your 35th round dude is going to hit it's going to be the next Mike Trout. Like, who knows that? So let, let's help that, you know? I don't know. I, I get passionate about it. I'm sorry. 
No, no, that's why we brought you on here, man. I mean, you know, you're willing to have the fight. and You know, there's a lot of guys who aren't. And, you know, like you said, when you were playing, you know, you necessarily didn't even think that it was something that, you know, wasn't normal, if you will. Right. Is, right. is that the mindset when you're going through it? Like, because in the article, it says that there's people who sit in the bullpen and talk about how poorly run, you know, the Angels organization was. I'm sure that happens around, though. Is that something that you remember being talked about? Like, man, this is this is fucked up. Like, we're sitting in a situation, you know, like, I got a bunk here with Freddie and Bill, and, yeah. you know, we're eating zebra cakes. Like, it, or is it so, something that people just kind of take as gospel? Yeah, so people definitely take it as gospel to some degree. I will say this. Okay. Um, but with that being said, like, it was, yeah, like, that was the message, man. Like, you got drafted in the minor leagues, like, you were in the grind. Like, you were told from the time you get there, control what you can control. You're a grinder. There's a whole page called Minor League Grinders. They have 40,000 followers, and it's about the stories and BS that these guys go through. I mean, guys are eating bugs in their hamburgers. I mean, I literally was like yeah. – there's dude, I was sleeping with condoms on my uh, – there was a shot w – one of the rooms in low A, the curtains were ripped off, the sink was dripping, I had a condom on the uh, smoke detector – my buddy and I got in from a four o'clock, you know, bus trip and we're like, strap it on. Like, you know, we got to show up tomorrow. And so like you get into a point where it is what it is. And it's like, as a minor league player, as a young kid, you, you don't have a voice. There's no union. There's no nothing. So it's like the situation just continues. There's never like a breaking point. There's never a, a point where someone's like, hold on a second. This is messed up because when you get to the MLB, it's almost like a, man, I went through all this, now I'm here, now I just shut up, and now, like, I'm here, and it, it's not that it's a selfish process, it's not selfish, it's just, like, every level you have a team, you know, you have, the, you have your yeah. rookie ball team, you have your A ball team, your double A, your triple A, and you get to the MLB, and you have your team there, and so, like, nobody wants to, you know, excuse my language, but, like, shit on, and, Good. like, bring attention to something else, man, like, it's I'm my team here. I'm not going to sit there and shed light on something else. And like, that's, that's just kind of the culture that baseball has been. And so people, you know, I know that's a long winded answer, but like, man, no, you're gonna, like mm -hmm. I strictly remember getting my, getting my money thinking I was cool. I was a young high school kid. I thought I was hot shit. Um, I had a little bit of an entitlement factor to me. I thought I was a little bit better. It's like, Ooh, I'm the fourth rounder. I got X, Y, and Z. And, and unfortunately, that was my mindset when I was a 19-year-old, 20-year-old kid. And then I continued to work through. But, like, looking back at some of the senior signs and the guys getting 10000 bucks, 5000 bucks, I'm not in their perspective, so I have no idea. And so they're in – and it's like, how do you even, like, you know – you see what I'm saying? Like, you see why oh, it's so it. difficult to, like, like, break through that barrier? Yeah, no, I, I definitely understand. But what, one thing I, I guess I do want to ask you is, so from your opinion, what is the reason why there's not more major leaguers, either current or former, who have been willing to even have this conversation in the first place? Because, yeah. you know, now you're saying as to why, you know, maybe you didn't feel that way or, you know, what your mindset was when you were 18, 19, 20. But, you know, how come there's not a lot more players who, you know, like the, the big name players who, who have these conversations um, that's a good question. You know, I think it's a, it's a, um, generational difference. I, I think social media has revolutionized everyone's voice and power. And I think that's also, you have a group of um, players that grew up in baseball with, you know, the, the team did the media, um, you know, the head media coordinator came in, got the players, they talked on air, they did their commercial, they did their commercial and then they left. Now you're starting to see players, you know, come into this game and everybody like you and I are with 22 people live, we're sitting here saying our opinion and that opinion matters now. And so, you know, social media and baseball, baseball is definitely more of an old school style sport. Social media is kind of deemed as, you know, stupid or like, you know, don't focus on that, focus on the team. And so you start to kind of build this culture where there's like a group of people that are like, I don't care about that. I'm here to win. I'm here to focus on the team. I'm not here to focus on the minor leagues. And you know what? To each their own, man. Like, everybody has the power to sit there and support whatever cause they want. Um, I just – the more and more that I did my personal growth, the more and more that I realized what was important and what wasn't important to me, 
I started narrowing in on a few things. And like, at the end of the day, it's about what's doing, what is right to do and what's not right to do. You know, treat people with respect, maybe give a little bit of your two, three, four percent to give back to a greater cause that's going to ultimately support the whole organization. So to answer your question, like I said, I, I got long winded answers, but like to answer your question, hey, you're man, good. <laughs> the, the reason why I don't think, you know, veteran players are doing it. It's just, I think it's just, it's how baseball's been, man. Like it's just the culture. Um, and I'm not knocking them whatsoever. I just think at some point in time, someone needs to say, listen, you know, you're getting paid 10 grand, like post taxes for eight months. Like you're told to go compete and go work in the off season. But how are you supposed to do that if you have to get a job somewhere else? Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, how are you supposed yeah. to train? Like, I spent five hours a day in the gym Monday through Saturday for, like, the last eight years because I had rent money. I had food money. I had – I could get my 4,000 calories a day. Like, when you're in the off season, dude, yeah, the clubs give you some protein. They give you, like, a little couple pills, you know, some vitamins. But, like, bro, you're not getting supported the way you need to to compete, to train, to get better. And so – I, I guess I don't really know why people aren't. I just think it's a kind of a generational gap going on right now. Okay. Uh, just a couple more questions because I know obviously, you know, it's late over here. Um, do you, did you have any uh, teammates that you knew of who had like a, lo a couple off season jobs, you know, some Lyft, some Uber, whatever it may be. Yeah. Just because of the fact that they were, you know, losing money basically during yeah. the play. I mean, in the article it said that uh, the pitcher in the trash pandas was losing about a thousand dollars a month, and I'm sure oh, that's yeah. a lot more common than it is uncommon. Um, yeah, man, we actually had a guy uh, that was when I was with Boston. Um, he was an Uber driver, and he was okay. actually told by the club, it wasn't like don't do that because obviously they, you know, they had to respect the fact that he had to make money outside of baseball because he was a senior sign, he wasn't making a lot, and he was doing Uber. And the team was – it was, like, frowned upon. It's like, what are you doing doing Uber? Like, you know, do pitch – do lessons. Like, that's why everyone does, you know, hitting lessons, pitching lessons. Um, but it's like, man, like, listen, I don't care about – I don't care about what your opinion is, man. Like, I'm in the off season. Like, you guys technically – I'm – like, this is a part-time gig. Like, that's how it's worded in the contracts with, like, the courts and stuff. Like, it's a part-time role. And so – it's dude, it's just, it's messed up, man. Like, I, I mean, guys, a lot of guys do what they're good at and that's teaching lessons or uh, maybe they have a family business, but like I've, I've seen guys be Uber and Lyft drivers. Um, and like, I've seen that with some organizations just like, Hey, like cut that out. Like, no, 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 you're not going to do that. You're at risk. But it's like, well then pay me more, man. Like that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So last thing I have for you is, um, what so now that you know we got ESPN to go ahead and report this kind of stuff? What's really the next step that you personally think that you know fans or people who want to truly advocate for this uh, need to do in your opinion? You know to you know keep the ball rolling. Maybe yeah. Now put a little bit of pressure on. I'll tell you what. Um, I think in order to get things rolling, I think there needs to be a general awareness being brought to this and that's and fernando that's kind of what i was saying earlier man like you talk to any person they think the minor league baseball players are rich like they think that yeah. they're making 100k like they think they got money millions and it's like no 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 man like yes there is a percentage of players that have a nice signing bonus like myself that you know can do things a little bit more fortunately but it's like what about the guys that had a one thousand dollar signing bonus that signed up for a seven-year contract like you know it's a, it's a seven year contract. Like think about that seven year contract for a thousand bucks, and, and that's, that's not even including manipulation. Remember, they can manipulate your service time. So oh hell yeah, they can. yeah, absolutely. I mean that's and that's part of the business, and that's that's unfortunately how you know there's some parts of baseball. It's the business side. It's it's a game. It's a game, and it's a business. I've said that before, but I, I guess the biggest thing for fans to do it's like, dude, like I'm not saying sit here. I'm not saying like protest MLB by all means. Like I know I talk crap about this MLB thing, about them doing it. But, like, go out there, you know, support the MLB guys. Support the minor league players, man. Donate to a cause. I'm actually trying to start a GoFundMe. I got a million things I'm trying to organize. I'm trying to get my laundry done at the same time. Get a <laughs> camp. I got everything. And, like, getting an awareness out that people, it's like, that. that's how, that's how change happens. It's like, 
if people aren't aware, no one's going to buy into that. And I guess something that could be done, it's like, you know, let's, let's just talk about the minimum wage. Like, let's talk about how these guys are getting paid four bucks an hour, three bucks an hour. Um, because unfortunately, I think the biggest, you know, maybe fans could advocate and, you know, for like a minor league union. Um, there's a really, there's a really cool Instagram profile. The guys doing a lot of good stuff, but like a minor league union, like there's no minor league representation. Like the, the representation is, you know, it's through the MLB and it's through the players association. And so like creating more awareness, um, telling people do like, that's why I talk on my, um, like that reel I did. It's like, I'm just trying to get people to know that guys make 12 K before taxes. Like, because I've seen the fight, I've seen the fights get shot down. They they went to court. Um, they you know it kind of got killed right there. And it's like, dude, like, be, and the MLB does a very good job of kind of wording it. So it's like that's how it's been. You know, they're paid as like it's a part time job, but it's not a part time job because it's you're technically spent you're spending eight months out of the year. Like you're not spending three to four months like you're not spending half the year you're spending eight months and in those four months you're supposed to be training it's like dude like just have a brain man like like have a brain how do you how do you get something more like how do you get the most out of your prospects they're in, they're also an investment so like why would you not want to take care of that investment you know what i know that seems great that seems crazy to some people to me it just makes sense but then again like maybe i'm just crazy I mean, I'm, you know, I I've obviously have the position I have working for a national pest control company. And I mean, I can vouch the fact that my boss definitely values things like mental health. He values things like, okay, you know what, man, you're working a lot. You know, I might not be able to cut your hours back today because, you know, we need to get this shit done today. But what I will do is compensate you a little bit more. It's like, you know, at least do that. You know what, if, if you can't, yeah. you know, give these guys a higher salary or maybe do a little bit more just to close the Hell gap. Yeah. Hell, maybe do a little bit more to make sure these guys are well fed, a good yeah. meal. They're they're not eating freaking mosquitoes in their cheeseburger, right? You know, it like, just oh, it's it, it's crazy. It's things that just seem so basic. You know, I mean, yeah. Todd and I have mentioned this. We had like an hour and a half talk about you know that whole article. We were talking about things like you know if you if I'm telling you these kind of stories, you're thinking, well, this is stuff that's happening in other countries, or you know, this is right. stuff that's happening elsewhere. But it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's happening here. I mean, this is a first world country. Bro, it's, it's 2021, like, it's 2021, and these guys have been making this salary for years, and it's like, it's, it, you know, there was a big thing that, like, in that article, it's like, there was supposed to be a revamp of people making money, you know, they cut down the teams, they eliminated, yeah. you know, they took minor league teams out of, out of cities, small cities 40, that relied on 40. revenue, but, like, where'd that money go to? Like, because from what I saw, it was maybe, like, a $100, $200 increase across the board it's like but let, but wait a second we didn't talk about housing we didn't talk about food we didn't talk about travel like we didn't talk about any of that stuff like what happens when a when a player is released and he has a six month rental lease like what like who's paying that you know like yeah. the player the player goes to the the player goes to double a he gets released and all of a sudden now he's liable to pay that the team doesn't pay that like he has to pay that with the thousand with the thousand dollar signing bonus. It's like, dude, just have a brain, man. Like you guys got MLB's got so much money. I promise you, they got so much money. If they wanted to fix this, they could fix it like that, dude. And it's that's that's the most annoying part. It's like, I get it. The like I understand the fact that there's a like the minor leagues is a grind. I'm not sitting there saying like because people have actually argued. They're like, well. Don't they have the choice to just quit? I'm like, dude, you got to understand these guys were five, six, seven years old from the time they wanted to be a major league baseball player. And they spent 15, 20 years sacrificing everything. And then now they're at this level and they're treated worse than dirt. It's like, it's not as easy as just quitting. You don't just quit because now maybe you, you know, I have friends that didn't go to college and get an education, you know, that didn't make it to the MLB. It's like, bro, like, give them something post career than just being a coach because that's what everyone is when, when you when you you know don't make it in the MLB or whatever you go back through the system and you become a coach it's like or just, a color commentator <laughs> true like true yeah like just, just give back dude like 
create something sustainable that's not going to like sit there and I, I don't know, man, like it, it makes me mad. I could talk about this forever. Well, maybe that's good news. Maybe we'll get to, we'll get to have you back on at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so well, I mean, I think that's going to just about do it. I mean, I, I know you, you got to run. Uh, do you want to yeah. go ahead and tell us a little bit about what you've got uh, going on, you know, with Drip and, you know, what yeah. you're going on on Thursday, I think it was? Yeah, so if anyone, um, you guys have been seeing me post some crazy stuff on the Instagram, that's basically stuff that I've been wanting to post on my social media for a long time that um, I wanted to be respectful towards baseball and, you know, not make it about me. But now that I've stepped away from the game, I've narrowed in on what I really love in life, and that's building something with my wife. Um that's making a community interactive with people. And that's kind of what Drip Social is. It's a, it's, a, it's a passion brand that is basically everything that Sam and I really, really enjoy in life. And we want to share those passions with other people. We want to make it a community. We want to use social media as kind of that platform to bridge that gap. Um, we're building it every day. We're coming up with new ideas. And you guys have seen me now post something about Clubhouse. Um, I haven't really talked a lot about baseball, but this Thursday, if you download the Clubhouse app, I'm going to be getting on there, and people can join it. You download it, search my name, Ty Buttry. We're going to have my mom, my dad, my, two of my coaches, my wife, my best friend, and I'm going to kind of give you guys the lay of the land, you know, like from starting from day one till now, the things I went through, the crazy stories that I promise you, you guys probably will never hear about before. Um, so I got, dude, I'm Fernando, man. Like my brain's going a million miles an hour. Like you guys can see, you look at my page, you're like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? Like I got a plan. It's just, it's being formed every single day. So that's kind of what I got on that. Yeah. I, I know you're busy. So you probably don't get to keep track of us much. You know what we're doing here on this page. We're like the same way. Like we got like MLB the show content now and, Whatever else, you know what, man? We're early enough where we're just throwing shit at the wall. Some stuff's gonna stick. I mean, the Ty Buttry interview did really well. You know, over a thousand oh, really? people are gonna listen to it, in it. Yeah, over a thousand people listen to it, and that was like our wow. fourth, fifth show. Wow. Which you know, for a show that's only getting started like that, that that's a good turnout. Yeah. So you know, people loved what you brought to the table. You can tell here, people love you. People love Sam. So uh, make sure to give her um, our regards. Um, and uh, we're going to do whatever we can out of our end, man, to keep fighting this fight. Um, we we released a T-shirt I with – I saw the shirts. Those shirts are awesome. I love that. I love that. That's And I'm actually like – I kind of – today I was sitting there, and I was kind of mad at myself. I'm like, Ty, like – I'm like, you've been talking about this minor league thing for the last two months. I'm like, bro, like, do something about it. Like, I've been talking about it plenty, but I'm trying to – I got a, I got a buddy, um, Derek, actually. He makes shirts and stuff. I'm trying to get some shirts, some uh, uh, GoFundMe, just something where I can do more than just kind of going back to your question a couple minutes ago. Like, is there anything more than do a – like, what you're doing, you know, you're creating kind of a scholarship, uh, you know, a fund for these guys, man. Like, that's what I want to get to. Like, I, you know, maybe it's a scholarship program we can create because um, right now MLB and people, they're not going to create that. So, D Brown, 904, man, he's the guy that's been – my go-to uh, OG buddy for years, but man, it's just, Fernando, I appreciate you doing this, man. And I appreciate, um, you know, you fighting and raising awareness to this. Like I said, 12 grand before taxes. That's not it, dude. It's not it. That ain't the business. Unfortunately, nope. actually it is the business, but it shouldn't be. It is. It is so. the business, unfortunately, but it should, it's like, dude, like, come on, just have a break. Just, just a couple, throw a couple million bucks, man. Problem solved. Your investment's taken care of. Guys are happy. Everyone in the organization got energy. Very simple, very simple things that I don't know, man. I just it's complex to, to some people, maybe you know. And who, who I don't give a shit. You guys have seen me. I clearly don't care what people think. I'm going to continue to talk about it. But uh, I do want to say somebody asked a question farther up. I saw it. They said the the article single that uh, King. Uh, yep, out the angels. Yep. Yeah, the, the article basically singled the Angels out. Did Ty notice any differences between the Angels and Red Sox and minor league systems? So one thing I told Fernando is I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to throw blame personally on the Angels. And you guys saw me post on my uh, page the other day that this is not a singular team issue. Uh, every level, you know, every um, – so like the Salt Lake Bees kind of like run um, – they run their own triple A team. And then like the double A team, like every team has their own way that they run it. They have their own per diem. 
when I was with the Red Sox, like, for instance, the Red Sox decided to give, like, uh, 500 bucks a week extra for food money for the minor league team. But, like, the Salem Red Sox and the Portland Sea Dogs, like, they were responsible for, like, the travel and stuff like that. And so it's almost like these, you know, these cities host the Portland Sea Dogs. You know, the Salt Lake Bees host um, the AAA team for the Angels. And, and then the team can give money to that if they want to. And so, like, here's the deal. It's not, it's not the Red Sox. It's not the Angels. It's not the A's. It's not the Yankees. It's not the, te- the Rangers. It's a s- systemic issue that MLB is not giving more money. And, and guess who? MLB is the collective teams. They're all 30 teams. It's the clubs. That's who MLB is. So it's all the clubs conglomerately not working towards giving players more. So it's like it's not, it's not the Angels. It's not one team. It's the whole thing. There are some organizations that do it very, very well. They give back. There's some organizations that I promise you, you guys, I promise you, if you saw what's going on out there, you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked. So yeah. that's all I got. No, no, thank you very much. And thank you once again for the extra time, man. Um, keep fighting the good fight. Keep doing what you guys are doing on your social media. I, I love how it's uh, – same in yourself or unapologetically yourself. And at the end of the day, man, that's what matters. Just be yourself. And there's one thing I've learned is you can just come on here and be a complete dumbass a couple hours a day and people love it. That's what we do. We just come out here and we yeah. have our fun. And for whatever reason, people like it. And it's the same thing with you guys. You guys are yourselves and we all love it. So, you Appreciate know. Appreciate that. I, yeah, like I told you over text, man. I, I was a big fan of Ty Butcher, the baseball player, but Ty Butcher, the man, and uh, Sam Green, the woman, are the great people as well. So thank you guys. Right. Keep doing what you guys are doing. Uh, we love it, and we hope that you guys uh, keep doing it, and we hope to run into you guys again. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, thanks for asking some good questions, fighting the good fight. And I think Sam and I, we have been watching a Apple TV show. Apple TV, by the way, is super <laughs> rated. You guys need to go on and watch. They have some awesome shows. I'm going to go uh, hang out with Sam. And, yeah, Fernando, thanks, man. Talk to you soon, all right? See you guys. All right. Sorry. You guys take care.